Hello, I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough, and welcome back to another episode of the Summer of Spongebob. Today we're going to be looking at the very extensive world of Spongebob merchandising. Oh, where to start? This show debatably has more product-based tie-ins than MLP and Doctor Who combined, one of which started in the 60s and one is owned by a literal toy company. Needless to say, Nick struck gold when they began making this into a property, quickly overtaking the merchandising tie-ins of their previous breadwinner, Rugrat. SpongeBob is just one of those franchises that you could turn into anything. Of course, you've got the clothing tie-ins like SpongeBob shirts, hats, and sneakers. There is apparently a SpongeBob Supreme shirt that Nick actually made because you got to tie into the hip clothing of Supreme. Obviously, you've got the Halloween costumes so that the kids can dress up as Spongebob and friends. You got the posters you can hang on your wall. I actually had two. One was of the Spongebob movie and one was of this rock and roll design. And then you got the trading cards, which were stashed in places like arcades. Buy more cards! And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's just so much more Spongebob stuff out there. There's the party decorations, uh, pinata included. Well, Craig McCracken would be proud. You get a pinata? That means you've made it. Oh. There's Spongebob bed sheets, television sets, MP3 players, calendars, alarm clocks, clock radios, DVD and CD players, thermometers. You know, that was my first rectal thermometer. Mother okay, I'm gonna miss that bad boy. Get Even bouncy castles, because remember, a birthday party just isn't complete unless Spongebob is somehow involved. Three months later, it's my daughter's birthday, okay? I throw my daughter a party at the house, in the backyard. I tried to go above and beyond, I really did. I had Spongebob there. I got mad at Spongebob because he kept taking his helmet off and he was smoking cigarettes in front of the kids. I think the only thing Spongebob hasn't had yet was its own jumbo jet. Although I guarantee it, it's going to be the next step. I, I guarantee it. Spongebob Airliners. One of the biggest contributors to the Spongebob franchise was T.Y. Beanie Babies. They have made a bunch of different Spongebob plushies over the years. Ones of Spongebob, Patrick, Mr. Krab, Squidward, those last two of which I owned. And they even made a plush toy out of Spongebob's pineapple house. Anything and everything you could do to customize this yellow sponge, T.Y. has done it. They've turned him pink into a Frankenstein's monster, him in a tuxedo, him in a Santa cap, him with reindeer antlers. Sky is the limit. Next up we have figurines, and let me tell you, I've got lots to work with. It's really astounding how many companies have manufactured Spongebob stuff all throughout the years, I tell you. Sure, Nick themselves handle a lot of the newer model stuff nowadays, but since the dawn of the new millennium, it has been a rat race to have a taste of that Spongebob money. Companies like Just Play and Jack's Pacific have made tons of different Spongebob merch. Assembling toy companies like Lego and Mega Block have had their hand in various box sets based on the series. Spongebob can be given a bloody playset. Wait, how much does that fucking bus cost? A German company called Color Book manufactured Spongebob figures that were sold at Blockbuster video stores in 2000. Courage Band specialized in making collectible Spongebob pens for three years straight. Hot Wheels released various Spongebob toy cars, which... I also talked about in my Ed and Nettie Eternal Summer review. A company called Happy Dog specialized in making aquarium-based toys for the show. Hopefully those were better than the Dalek model that I got last year. You know what you did. Mattel was the first big supplier of SpongeBob merchandise, lasting from 2000 up until 2015. And these were probably the earliest SpongeBob toys I ever had growing up. This is basically a squeeze toy, like, it, there's a little switch at the bottom. And if you squeeze it, it uh, says a quote from the show. And, uh, well, that's Gary, and it also says this. Bring it around town. There you go. So I think you have to squeeze it like at least two or three times for it to say that. And the like next time it should say Gary's meow. So it's very well made with the little electronic at the bottom. And uh, it's, it's totally functional, as you can see, even after all these years. I mean, it says at the very bottom, this was made in 2000, and it still works to this day. I mean, the batteries haven't even died off on it, so that's, that's impressive. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite fond of this one. And then we have a Patrick variant. Uh, instead, they have Patrick sitting on a rock, like so, and there's a little switch at the bottom. So let's see what Patrick says, if he says anything. <laughs> There we go. So just like with Spongebob, uh, the plastic work is very good, the molding looks really good, um, even if it is a little weird that Patrick is smaller than Spongebob, but still, regardless, they are able to get around the whole uh, standing thing. Patrick, obviously, the pointed feet, that doesn't work, so they gave him a little rock perch. 
Uh, but as it stands, yeah, this is this is just as good as the other ones. Now, if there was ever a fast food place that was known for selling SpongeBob stuff, it would easily be Burger King. Burger King is one of the longest lasting proponents of SpongeBob merch. Anytime a special was announced, BK had toys that were being sold along with them. The few that I was able to get growing up were promoting the SpongeBob movie, Dunces and Dragons, and Truth or Square. This is a little plush toy, and uh, the thing is, it's a pull string toy where you pull the tie, and it just vibrates a little bit. For a toy made back in 2002, this somehow works a lot better than the little Nicky pull string toy did. <laughs> okay, well clearly the pull string doesn't work that well. For some reason they made this a toy of Squidward playing the clarinet. I think it... no, no, it doesn't even come out the clarinet because there's no hole for it. It's... Oh! The noise that it makes that's supposed to replicate Squidward's clarinet. Okay, now I see why they made it look like Squidward playing a clarinet. This is another Burger King toy. It was that you could put it in water and then this little button on the back and then it would suck up the water and then it would squirt out this little hole in the mouth right here. You can collect all 12! There's one in every kid's meal! Right over here we have the Plankton toy and I like how, just like with this model of Patrick, they had to give Plankton little ski feet because it's a wind-up toy as you can see and you wind him up and yeah, he would run along the floor like this, and as you can see, he's got the crown, so he's, it's like he's running away with the crown. Uh, honestly, seeing how Plankton's one of my favorite characters on the show, I, I really like the way this toy came out. Next up, you got the paddy wagon with Patrick on board, and uh, again, it's a little switch-operated thing, and uh, the batteries actually did die on this one, but basically what would happen is uh, you'd put them on the table, you set the thing on, and it would drive along. I'm glad that they made a paddy wagon because I remember that part in the trailer always like hyped up people when they saw it. The paddy wagon. Sesame seed finish. Steel belted pickles. And under the hood? Whoa. Yeah. Wow. You got the SpongeBob Rubik's Cube, which uh, it's it's like a Rubik's Cube mixed with one of those slide puzzle games where they have like one slot missing because if you want to get it right, you got to have it so all the pieces match up. Really, it doesn't matter what like the back looks like. It's like all that matters is you get the face correct. It's a SpongeBob Rubik's Cube, really. There's, there's nothing much to say about this itself. <laughs> the point of this, the water is all dried out, but there was this like, there was, there was a little tank of water and you would push down on these buttons and it would make SpongeBob kind of dance around. Over time, the water is dried up and now SpongeBob is just kind of stuck in there like the, the snowman from Knick Knack. Uh, this is a little ripcord Patrick toy, and I don't know why the hell it's not going in now. You would put the ripcord in, like so, and then you'd pull it out, and Patrick, I think he would spin around was the thing, because obviously you can't do it on this foot. You'd have to do it with this foot, because it has a flat surface on it. You'd, you'd try to have it that he spins around, but like, most of the time I remember it would fall over, because it's like, Patrick's a pretty, you know, top-heavy character. A few times you do get it to work is awesome and all, but I mean, most of the time, I remember it just falling flat on his back. Then you get this thing, which was supposed to be a SpongeBob, like, voice recorder, and I remember it specifically said, like, you were supposed to record, like, a couple seconds of yourself. I would always try it, and it would never work. I want to see if we can do it now. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Yeah, see, nothing. I don't know if it's the battery or what, but I remember even back then, this thing did not work worth a damn. Then you got this one where, this is just weird. Okay, first of all, his eyes looks like Igor from, from Young Frankenstein. And then there's a little thing in the back where you push on it and uh, he gets heart eyes. Uh, why, how that, uh, uh, how that connects to the movie, I, I don't know. SpongeBob Lost in Time toys are now at Burger King. There's a whole world of SpongeBob toys you can collect. Now, these were made in 2005 by Burger King. There was tons of these. I remember there was a lot of them. This isn't even all of them. Why there's one in every kid's meal. Yeah, it'd be representing SpongeBob from different like cultures and different periods of time and all that kind of stuff. You have SpongeBob as a uh, karate master here. You got him as uh, like as an ancient Japanese samurai. So it's good to know SpongeBob was uh, the original Weeaboo. SpongeBob is a country boy, a Texan. I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna Spongebob is a Canadian Mountie, and Spongebob as a, uh, Spongebob is a pirate. I, I like the little detail of the treasure map right here. This one's probably my personal favorite out of all of these, because, I don't know, a little attention to detail with stuff like this, uh, I actually like. Now we jump forward a little bit. This was made for the Spongebob special in 2009, and, uh, you'll notice that the whole theme they got this time around is 
You got SpongeBob, Patrick. They had one for everybody. They also had one of Squidward and Mr. Krabs and Plankton and I think Sandy. And uh, the whole gimmick here is that they're made of squares. I kind of like it for some weird reason. Like just the aesthetic of it is kind of cool. The whole square things, especially it looks like it looks interesting on Patrick because SpongeBob, we're used to seeing him as a square. Come on, but. Uh, seeing Patrick as this, this is kind of interesting in its own way. There were other food places that wanted a nab of the Spongebob money pie, like these Wendy toys that were made to promote the Spongebob house party special, Party Pooped. And, uh, let's see, so you got Spongebob, uh, this is supposed to be a notepad. You'd basically write on the Spongebob sheets and take notes. The nautical Spongebob notepad. And then you got Gary, and, uh, he rolls, well, can't do it here on a soft surface, but turn it around, there's a little confetti spiral thing going on. That's pretty cool. Uh, easily, that's probably the best one out of all these. And Sandy, she's T-posing for some reason, or maybe that's Y-posing. No, if anything, SpongeBob's T-posing. Look at this, this is definitely T-posing. Now, another very common piece of merch that SpongeBob has delved into is keychains. There are many minifigures and keychain products that were provided by Basic Fun Toys, a company that's been involved with the franchise since 2000 to 2007. There's this one, which is also doubling as a flashlight, so um, the button, oh, there you go, battery's dead, so that's why the little flashlight function's not working. This is probably the best mold of Spongebob uh, out of all of these. This one keeps the aesthetic going, it's, it's got a good face, got a good structure. Little sponge holes are totally visible, but they're not like blown out like that one right there, for instance, that have uh, little holes in the top that you could stick candy in. And these were often used as like stocking stuffers for holiday seasons and stuff like that. Uh, as you can tell with uh, the ones like this and this, these were often used for Christmas. It's sponged up with a clapboard. I would like to imagine that they probably had these for um, Oscar season maybe. No, this is the one they'd hand out for the Oscars. I mean look, he's got a little, little award, he's all dressed up in his black and white. He's fancy, he's a fancy boy. These things were cool back in the day because I mean they had like such a wide variety of these. And, uh, you know, they got one of Sandy, they got a bunch of different ones with Spongebob. I think you're supposed to put this at the end of a pencil, but you got Spongebob in his underwear, obviously a classic staple, just like in the Rip Pants episode. You got him in his uh, bunny outfit from the Party Pooped Again. Him in his good old Krusty Krab uniform fry cook outfit. This one is like him as a singer. This, uh, this was not part of any episode from around that time, because this was like, this, this was like season two or season three era, so... Yeah, this was just one that they came up with on their own. And one of my personal favorites, you get this was them trying to replicate the Hall Monitor episode. Now, as I mentioned in my Doctor Who merch review last year, I usually find this kind of stuff in places like FYE, Hot Topic, Barnes and Nobles, and places like that. And when I went to Hot Topic not too long ago, I saw brand new SpongeBob toys by everyone's favorite company, Funko Pop Vinyl. Like Lego and Mega Bloks, they've been making SpongeBob figures for quite some time now. The latest models as of this point are Imagination SpongeBob, Patrick with wood on his head, and Leotard Squidward. You know, like a lot of people, I tend to be critical of the Funko Pop vinyls, but mm, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being a little harsh. I mean, it's not like they're gonna do something really annoying, like make a theatrical movie out of the. Never mind. Never mind. And while we're talking about stores, the ultimate place to get Spongebob merch is easily at Universal, a place called Spongebob Store Pants, a little gift shop that prides itself on Spongebob merch. Man, Doctor Who was only one little section in the gift shop outside of what used to be Terminator. Spongebob gets its own store! That's just the power of the sponge, I guess. Good thing Simpsons is there, so that Spongebob doesn't walk away the most commercial brand in that park. Let's end this episode with a special note. Let's look at some of the Spongebob bootleg merchandise. I mean, surely this has to be fun, right? Yeah, on, on second thought, let's let's do a Spongebob bootleg review some other time. Next episode's gonna be focusing on Spongebob video games, so until then, I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough. I'm only Spongebob. I'm only, I'm only. I'm only Spongebob. Sp Spongebob. Maybe I'm Patrick. Maybe I'm Puff, thinking I can see through this and see what's behind. Mr. Krabs got no way to prove it, so maybe I'm Pearl. But I'm only SpongeBob, after all. I'm only SpongeBob, after all. Don't put your blame on Pearl.